In a previous video, I showed you how to pour resin to make some journal covers like these. And today I'm going to show you how to cut and prep the resin for the covers and then how to do a couple of different binding techniques, okay? So, um, the first thing you're going to want to do is assemble your insides, the pages um, that you want to put inside your resin covers. And the reason for that is because of the size here. So you can pick pages to uh, fit your covers or you can cut them to fit, you know, whatever. But you're going to want to look at about the middle. Okay, let me just let me just show you. Let's start. This is the one I'm going to cut. I'm going to hold on to this one for a bit. But I'm going to demonstrate on this one today because I want to use it for which one was it? This these covers or these insides. These are a bunch of um, jelly printed and painty doodly papers that were gifted to me from Lou Jean Martin and I want to put this cover on here because I think that just looks great. So I need to make sure that the middle of the cover or the part that's going to be along the spine is about the same length as the spine. It doesn't have to be exact, but it has to be pretty close. And you can see this is pretty close. It's maybe just a smidge shorter. And I've got it, you know, you want to kind of position it where it would be, center it up, and you can see that's going to that's going to work. Same way for the back side, because this is going to be the back side. Yeah, that's going to work. So my width is good. It matches my pages. I'm good to go. Now, what I want to do is, this is, this is how I do it. You may find an easier way for you or whatever, but this just works easiest for me. I take one of my signatures, and I position it, you know, about where I want it to be. I like a little bit of the natural overhang on the edges because that's cool for me. Kind of straighten it up. Doesn't have to be perfect, but I do want it, um, you know, relatively straight and even and not all wonky and weird. Okay, so I want it about like that. And then I just take some kind of something that will write on resin, and usually this white gel pen will do that. And today it's decided it's not going to. Okay, it's writing in little tiny bits. <laughs> And for these purposes, that's okay. I just want a general line that I can kind of sort of see, and I can. So I want to do that here. And this this piece it is kind of long, so it's not like I can just cut it in half and then I've got my covers because that would be way too big. So I'm going to use this again to measure the other cover, or not to measure, but to mark where I want to cut it. Okay, I had to stop and go get a piece of, this is oven glass, so it's heat proof up to, you know, hundreds and hundreds of degrees. And I had my hot knife sitting on my cutting mat, which, as I hope we all know, is a big no-no. These cutting, self-healing cutting mats typically do not like heat. And I don't want it to buckle and warp, so I caught that just in time. Okay, I've got my piece marked with my two lines. Now all you have to do is get something sharp and a straight edge and start cutting. Now you can use the first one that I did, the first, yeah, the first one that I did, this one, I just used a utility knife and a metal edged ruler and I just had to, you know, press firmly and go back and forth over and over and over and over and almost anything you use is going to be repetitive. 
I'm willing to bet you could use a Dremel with a cutting wheel and just zip right through that. But that would require getting my Dremel out. I'd have to do it outside, you know, effort. <laughs> so I'm willing to work a little harder for convenience sake. <laughs> and not everyone has a Dremel. So, you know, I think we all probably have something sharp and a metal edged ruler to guide us. So I'm going to put that along the line that I made. And let's zoom in just a tad. I also have another tool. You don't have to go out and buy specialty tools, but if you happen to have a hot knife, like this Dremel one, it's a Dremel, I don't know, multi-tool. It comes with different tips, so you can solder, or you can cut, or whatever. This actually works fairly well. The heat just kind of makes it easier to get through the resin. Um, and it doesn't, you know, mess up your edges or anything. So what I do is I just go along my edge here, hold your straight edge firmly, press down firmly, but you don't have to, um, you know, you're not trying to cut through on the first pass, in other words. Just slow and steady pressure, and the heat just kind of helps that knife to get through there a little bit easier than it does without the heat. Okay, I've gone through there probably five or six times. Now, let's see. Oh yeah, it's pretty close. See, I've got this one part is gone through and this part is I think it's a little bit thicker so I'm just gonna slowly go through here again till it cuts all the way through There we go. Okay. Now I have my first cover. And you can see that makes a nice cut. Um, you can go along your edge if you've got any little extra do wallies. I just kind of use the, the heat and knife together to scrape away anything that I don't want. Being careful not to gouge it. Okay, now I'm just going to do the same thing to the other side, and I will have my covers. That one looks good too. All right, covers are ready. Now, now let's look at um, poking the holes because we need holes for these, right? We're gonna do this Coptic stitch, which is stitched right through the cover and we need to poke holes in it. I've done it a couple different ways and I'm gonna show you those ways. One that I think will be easy for most of us is to use your Crocodile Big Bite. And I use the littlest, you know, it has the two sizes, and yours will have a die thing, or not a die thing, but a eyelet setter thing right here. I broke mine, so it doesn't. <laughs> but I only use it for hole punching anyway. So I'm going to use the littlest one. And... What I need to do is mark the covers according to the marks on the book. Oh, yeah, before we do this, let's, um, let's do our pages. This one, I think, this is one I already cut, and I believe I'm going to use it for this stack of painty papers from, I believe these were from Cindy Perani. Just beautiful painty papers. And, yeah, 
going to use this one here. And you can see I have to kind of trim the papers to fit. These were some coffee filters and I wanted to use them. I wanted them in here, but I didn't want the ends sticking out because I didn't want them to get all, you know, bent and torn. So I just trimmed the coffee filters down to size and the rest of the pages fit great. So yeah, next step is um, punch your pages. I'm going to unplug this for my own safety and put it away. Now to punch my signatures, I like to use a template. I just take a scrap piece of paper and then measure off where I want my holes punched. Um, you can eyeball it or you can measure it. If, when I'm doing a Coptic binding, I like to actually kind of measure them out kind of even. They don't have to be exact. I think I have more space in here than I do here and here, but at least here and here are equal, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so yeah, just, just punch it out where you want your holes and make sure that your um, template is the same size as your spine. Make your marks and then I use a book cradle. I've had this one forever. I got it from quietfiredesign.com. They are in Canada. I've had it for I don't know how many years, but lots and lots. And um, I would definitely buy it again, even paying shipping from Canada. There are all kinds of instructions you can get online for making your own and exactly like this. You can get templates. Trust me when I say this is not as easy to do as you might think. I know, I've tried it several times, and that is when I decided that whatever shipping I paid to get it from Canada to my house, it was worth it. <laughs> you may have a different experience, but I'm just saying, that's what it was like for me. <laughs> okay? So, I've got my nested pages, which are all roughly the same size, um, so I don't have to worry about positioning anything. If you're pages of your signature. A signature is just a folded nested group of pages. If your pages in your signature are not all the same length at the spine, you'll want to position them so that you get at least two holes in them to hold the papers in, but it's best if you can get all of your holes into all of your pages for a Coptic stitch. Put that in there. Take a pokey tool and punch where my marks are. And I'm going all the way down because I want big holes. I, I haven't exactly decided which thread I'm going to use, but I've got two on my mind and they're both kind of thick. I find this is one of the instances where waxed linen is not my favorite. And that's when I'm doing a Coptic stitch. Wax linen is, you know, it holds tight. It's great for that. It just doesn't give as pretty of a stitch as some of the softer, thicker threads. And since your stitches show along the spine, you know, you want them to look nice, right? So for that reason, I like to use thicker thread than I normally would, which requires larger holes. Plus, it's going to be easier to see when I'm demonstrating for you. So there is that. You are going to want to keep these all facing the same way. Like this, this clearly is what I'm calling the top. Therefore, this is going to be the top of all my signatures. I want to keep them oriented so that all of my tops are together. I guarantee no matter how careful you measure, if you accidentally do this, you're going to have trouble with your holes lining up just right. So keep the tops to the top, okay? <laughs> now, sometimes if my pages are just, you know, for a junk journal, I'll take a pencil and mark a little T on them for top. But if I don't want to mark them, then I use a like a paper clip or binder clip or some kind of clip and I 
clip them at the top so that I know that's the top. Whatever works for you. If there's a certain order you want your signatures in, it's a good idea too to number them just in case, you know, you're walking into the living room and you drop the whole stack. <laughs> you know, I'm not saying you would actually do such a goober thing like that. <laughs> or that I've actually done that goober thing. I'm, I'm just, you know, I'm throwing stuff out there. You just grab what you need and leave the rest. <laughs> okay. So, signatures are ready. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six. Seven, eight, nine, ten. You don't have to have an even number of signatures for this at all. It does look better if you have quite a few. If you've only got four signatures, I, personally, I wouldn't bother doing the Coptic stitch for that. Um, uh, I'm trying to even see if I have a skinny example and I'm not sure that I do this one this one had quite a few signatures but they were skinny it's really kind of hard to even see the stitches in the pattern of course that variegated thread doesn't help either but it, it just it shows off the stitches a lot better if you have nice fat signatures you know a lot of space along the spine that's really um, the best for a Coptic stitch and then you can see how you know the thick threads and these are not even really neat and tidy but the thick threads do show up better than the skinny little threads see that's just like okay why bother because you can hardly even see what's happening <laughs> So that's why wax linen is not my favorite for this. Even doubling it up, that just makes everything twice as hard. So I like to use a, a fatter uh, thread or twine. Like embroidery floss, that's great. I use that in several of these. All right, so everything is punched. Now our covers. What I like to do is take, you can I use either the template or one of my punch deals. I guess I should use my template. And I've got my little marks so I can see exactly what's going on. Line this up. Okay, first I'm going to figure out that's going to be like that. That's going to be like that. You want to make sure that your covers are just like they're going to be on your book. This would be wrong because that's not top side to top side. You want tops to tops, right? So this is going to be the top of the front cover, top of the back cover. If you did them like this, the top would be down here. Does that make sense? So position them in the way that they're going to be on your book before you mark them for punching. Then you can go in and I come down probably between an eighth and a quarter of an inch and then I just use the template to make marks for where I want my holes and I really don't even measure I just kind of eyeball it and that looks about right it looks about straight oh here's a sharpie <laughs> now the sharpie surfaces so I'm going to mark there, 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 and there. Did I get them all? Yes, I did. Okay, got my little Sharpie marks there. Now I'm going to do the same thing on this one. And where's my clamp? I don't want to lose... Which one is the top? That's the top. So I put the clip at the top. And then this one. Eyeball it about the same. Okay, two different ways you can do this. 
One is the first way that I tried, which does work, but not everyone has this tool, and that is to use a hot wire. This is a hot wire. I think it's also called a styrofoam cutting tool, and it's like the hot knife. You just plug it in, it gets hot, and then you cut stuff with it. <laughs> this is great for foam core board, or for, not foam board, but that, um, those big sheets of insulation like you get at Home Depot that you can cut and use for craft projects. We haven't really done any of that. I may have to show you that because that's really cool. I used it a lot for that. And uh, styrofoam, it just cuts through styrofoam like butter. It will also poke holes in resin. So, keep my top side to the top. And let's zoom in. That made no sense keeping my top side to the top keep track of my top side. That's what I meant. So, top. Place this on the little mark that I made and then just kind of let it sit and it will work its way through there. There it goes. And where is it? There's my little hole. Oh, that wasn't, that's not my hole. <laughs> Funny. I thought, wow, that punched a huge hole. That is just some clear, it was like a clear hole in the resin. Here is my hole right there. Y'all, I nearly had a panic attack. I thought, oh my gosh, I just gouged a huge hole, but there's my next mark. I'm going to have a problem. <laughs> that wasn't as stupid as I thought. Okay. There's my hole, right there, okay? <laughs> so I can use this hot wire to do that for all of these holes. Just be patient, it will melt its way through. And there we have it. So, there is a simple, easy option. I'm pretty sure you could use your Dremel to drill through that. Or, I did find out that my Crocodile Big Bite works pretty well, too. I'm going to line it up. And... Punch. And there I have it. And do that one. And there we go. So, all four holes punched. And I have not had any trouble with the crocodile cracking the resin. I thought that might be an issue, but you know, you do have to pour thin. I do pour kind of thin for these covers so they stay flexible. And that's probably um, helps to keep them from cracking when you punch. They are flexible enough that they just move with it and it works great. Okay? Now, once you have your signatures punched and your covers punched, you are ready to bind. And I believe I'm going to do that in another video so that this doesn't go on forever. And uh, that video will show two different styles of the Coptic stitch binding. And I'll make um, two journals for you to see examples of both of those styles. But for this journal prep and assembly, that's it. The end. <laughs>